Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's November 29th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Friday, so um, we won't be back again until Monday. Fairly interesting day today. What looked like was going to be another quiet day. We had a nice rally in the afternoon. Uh, there were several news items today. There was a uh, early morning. Um, uh, a couple around 7.30 my time this morning. They didn't really tend to affect the market. The one you have to really worry about is the FOMC announcement that came at 1 o'clock. And you can see it was not very, it did, it did very little. There, there weren't any surprises. You, generally, you'll know if there's some surprises because the market will go haywire. Uh, we had a little bit of volatility there for just just a minute or so. And then the market really just kept trending higher. So um, anyway, Notice that there's a two-legged correction here in the middle, uh, and then we, and then the rally from yesterday. Notice, you know, we rallied yesterday afternoon really strong, or really most of the day yesterday. It was kind of a little bit similar to yesterday, other than we didn't have the two legs down. We just kind of corrected. We had a leg up, corrected a little bit, and then took off again. Where today we started down. And you really you got two measured legs. If you measure this first leg, you drag it over, you can see it's basically a measured move there. And then from that point, we started higher again. And we really trended up into the 2 o'clock hour where at that point, we actually get a close outside here during the news item. A couple legs to a new high, and then we trended down. So... Um, in the end, we really might have closed up very slightly from yesterday. Not much at all. So a lot of movement considering we didn't really, there's very little market change. But let me back out. We'll talk about the trades. Uh, not a lot of them today, so it won't take too long. Uh, somebody asked me today, so it seems like I'm drawing less trend lines and pat and relying more on the bars and patterns and that's not necessarily true what you'll notice is let me just kind of go over to yesterday to show you um there, there's probably a bigger pattern here but it doesn't help you so you really have to narrow into the shorter term stuff like this is a trend right here and then this was a trend and then a trend down and then a trend up and so i'm just narrowing in on those trends because on the bigger picture, there's probably a pattern here. Let's just see if we can find one. There's maybe off the two swings at the top. And if you move that down, there it is. But that doesn't really help you. After 11 o'clock, we never came back to that trend line. Um, after maybe a little after 11, we never got back up to the high. So Yes, that, that normally that would be your the trend line you'd be looking for, your main trend line. But as you can see today or yesterday, that just doesn't help you. So you got to narrow in. So what I did was narrow into this stuff right here. And you can see that. And actually, I, I just drew a trend line working off this small trend right here. It was very similar to that same trend. It just didn't help you as it got on up here, so I didn't draw it up there. And then once you got up here, you can see there's a trend just kind of working across there. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, no, and then, well, I'll just show you a few more. Then you work down that trend there. Then you work up that trend there. So if anything, I'm probably drawing more trend lines um, than I normally would because normally you don't get this many changes in your trend from one direction to the next this many times during a day so hopefully that makes sense um if it felt like you know it, it's if it felt that way or felt let me back up here if it felt like i wasn't drawing as many trend lines and stuff it's probably because it's just on the bigger picture the main trend you just not there's it doesn't help you because there's no bounces off that trend line we never get back to it again we're working in between. We we don't get back to it till after till the day. Actually, you can see that actually came into play today. We bounced up that a little bit, but you didn't need it because you had this one working down. And I always tell people the only reason we want to go into the previous day's price action 
is um, to look for previous support resistance. If there's like when you're making a new low here and there's no more support resistance to go lower, you have to start looking over here. Same thing going higher. Once we start going higher, if there's nothing else over here, you got to go into the previous day to find your important support and resistance. So hopefully that's clear, makes sense. Uh, but no, I wouldn't say it for any reason that I'm drawing less trend lines and replying more and and you know relying more on patterns in the bars themselves. So the patterns in the bars are important, but these trend lines and small congestion and, and ranges are the key to all of it. Those key entry points, those the strong support and resistance. That's the key to all of it. So keep that in mind. But let me back out. You can see the bigger picture there. That leg down sideways, another leg down, and then we rallied uh, into the two o'clock hour. So let me back out where you can see it a little better. We'll go through the trades. Like I said, there's not many today, so it won't take that long. And we'll wrap it up for the week. Uh, when I came in, we were trending down. Um, actually, we were, it started working higher as I came in here. And we just we were, noticed we get that break higher and turns and goes out the other side. Uh, this bar is huge. Uh, I don't even know how many points that bar is right there. It's, it's huge. That bar is 19 ticks. So... That's almost a five point bar. You can't go short down here and you see what would have happened. It would have ticked a couple of ticks and then reversed on you. What you might have done here, this was really where the important, where the second entry triggered when it broke below there. So when this broke higher and turned down and went below this bar, you might drop a limit order right there and see if it would back up and fill you before going lower. That would be the only way I'd enter that. No way I would enter way down here five points down here just to get burned. So uh, I would, your better best to wait on a lower high here. And that came here and notice there was never a trigger. So it wouldn't have triggered for you. And prices just kept going higher. Uh, you actually got higher low here. So um, now you're making higher highs and higher lows. So draw that trend line. You actually confirmed it here, but not a very good signal bar, but you got a second entry long right here. Notice that new swing high. That high is higher than that high. So you got a new count here. Pull back first entry, pull back again, second entry. That's a second entry long on a higher low on a fairly bullish bar right at the trend line. That's the one you want to take. That was a nice easy move. We run up here and we find resistance where we already had a double top. You get a break of this trend line, then you run up and make a new high. You get a lower high here, um, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take that low. Um, it's not a bad signal bar really, but notice all the support right across there, uh, plus the fact that we're still working higher and you're still making higher highs and higher lows here. You did make one lower low, but that. You may, so you may get another leg up here. So I wouldn't take a short, but when it reverses, that's a second entry long. Um, notice you're moving up first entry. That's a failed second entry short. And so you may take that long. You, it's, it's pretty obvious right here we're going sideways. And so this is not a great place to enter, period, at this point. So I did mark that one green because there, it is a failed second entry short. So they probably trap people there. But I'd probably just skip all this and wait and see if you can get an entry off one of the other highs and then um, notice we just keep bouncing but now we're making lower highs this actually just moves down right here you can see that just your resistance instead of being up here is just moved down but notice we tested it once we tested it twice we tested it three times and we tested it again and got a big bearish bar if you've got enough room to get out before those lows you might take that one. Notice how it broke lower and it bounced right at it and bounced back up. It ended up going a little lower, but it doesn't always do that. So you've got to have enough room there. So the only way you can take that one is if you have enough room to get out. And uh, the other way you might do this, you might let it break lower and drop a limit order, a tick or two back in, whatever it takes to get out before you get to there and see if you can get filled and then head there. Um, we run on down we come back 
It's tempting to go long here. This is basically a double bottom, so a higher low and a relatively bullish bar right at the strong support. But you do have that trend line, and you can see it's in play right through there. So I'm leery of that one. And it just kind of keeps going across in here. You don't really get a good signal bar in here again, so I don't really like it. There's a second entry short right here. Not a good signal bar. Uh, notice what happens, though. This is basically a double top, first entry, second entry. Um, and you're looking for prices to move in equal distance. And that's really from up here. So if you measure that distance and find an equal distance, which turns out to be the lows, that's your target. So you've got enough room to get out right there. Uh, so I like that one. Just to try to ride it down to this level. And of course, it bounces right there and it really takes off. Uh, you make a lower eye here, not very bullish, uh, bearish, I mean. You're coming off the highs here, so you're just looking for a chance to get short to hopefully go back to the other side. And notice that failed second entry long. Nice bearish bar, confirms that trend line. That's where you want to go short. There's another little pullback, breakout pullback short here on the midline, but that bar's too bullish. Then you get down here and break lower and you're just, you've been too far. Notice how long you've been away from the EMA. It's going to bounce soon. So I don't see anything down here that would make me want to enter. And of course we do bounce here. You, you need to wait on a high or a low. You don't really get one till here. Very bearish bars. <clears throat> that one's tempting to go short, but you really need because um, that's the first break of that trend channel working down there. So you're looking for prices to go lower, but you really need a lower high. And you get a couple in here, but they're very neutral to bullish bars. And you got a lot of support across here. And you notice that little trend line working down. You get a break, move to a new low, and it actually breaks lower right there and turns and goes out the other side. You might go long right there. Um, no way I'd wait for that bar to close and enter here. It's very similar to the big one coming down. I mean, oh, I got something selected. No wonder it's not letting me. You can see the range of that bar is 14 ticks. So a little over three points just for that one bar. It's really big. Um, I'd only go long right there when it broke our. But notice that new low, and you get a first entry short, a second entry short, and it bounces right off that trend line, big bullish bar. Again, that bar is really big, but um, you might let it break higher and drop a limit order back in here a little bit, and it broke higher, and it did back up quite a bit. So you could have gotten filled at least a tick or two back in that bar, maybe a little bit more. Um, that turns out to be a great place to go long. And then notice you get a little double top here, pull back first entry, pull back, and there's a second entry long with a bullish bar right there. Let me make that a little bigger. Right off the trend line again, I like going long there. And notice first entry, second entry bounces right off the key entry point. There is a little trend line working up through there and it's right off that, so I like that one. Um, that's a little reversal pattern headed back to the top. And that gets you into the one o'clock hour. I mean, the noon hour. And I wouldn't take anything that hour before. I wouldn't enter any new trades an hour before that FOMC announcement. Even though it turns out to be relatively tame here, uh, you just can't risk that. Notice there would have been an entry right here. It probably would have been a nice entry. Although there is a doji right there, and that's at least four bars stacked up. So even then, it's questionable. But notice it's not really doing much, and you got a little double bottom. You try to go lower once, twice, and you get a bullish bar. There's a new high there. First entry, pull back second entry. So there's a second entry long right at the key entry point. You're definitely making higher highs and higher lows up through there. There's a chance to go long. I mean, that's not very long after 1 o'clock, but you could tell by this time it didn't really affect the market that much. So it's okay to go long right there. And we run up. Um, 
There's another pull bite right here, but it's too close to these highs. And then we just kind of go sideways. But notice what happens. We make this a little low. We come out, we test it once. We test it twice. You can tell we're in a little trading range. Uh, if you feel like you got to, you can move enough there to get out. Uh, I don't, that's a good place to enter. There's a higher low here, but it's right into those highs. This actually should be up here by now. So I don't know that I go long right into those highs. That's a possibility, but really you need to get in as close to this line as you can because you need enough room to get out and you just barely get enough room there. And of course it does take on off. So it would have been a nice, uh, I doubt you've probably got a runner there. It's possible. It depends on how you entered it and what your setup looked like. But that got you into the 2 o'clock hour. There's actually a failed second entry short here. You've way overshot this thing, so you wouldn't want to enter up there that late in the day. Even though it would have worked, you don't want to risk that. You don't know that's going to happen. So there it was for today. Uh, not a lot of trades. Uh, not as much volume as we have been having, but still a nice day with still some volatility and some movement, a few news items as well. So interesting day, but, um, yeah, we'll be back Monday. Uh, no, again, no chart lessons on Fridays. Uh, so I'm done for the day. Um, so we'll see you next time. But this is Mac with price action trading system.com.